What's going on, everyone? So the other day, Nick Wright uh, proposed an idea uh, to send LeBron James and Steph Curry to the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, so I wanted to have a fun kind of just discussion. Of course, hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below, uh, because there is a lot of talk, a lot of hype, a lot of excitement around the possibility of LeBron James and Steph Curry teaming up together, try to go win an NBA championship. Obviously, I've even talked about how much I would love to see that. Now, personally, I do not see a scenario in which they both team up in San Antonio. I think if it was to happen, it would be in their perspective, uh, you know, situations now, like where LeBron goes to the Warriors or Steph goes to the Lakers. If I had to, like, predict if under the assumption that this were to happen, my guess is that it would be with the Lakers because the Lakers are kind of more in like that win now mode with Anthony Davis and LeBron James. You add Steph probably win a championship where the Warriors, they have just a bunch of really good young talent. So I'd imagine that they would want to kind of hit the reset button in that regard. But nonetheless, let's kind of dive into it, right? Because Nick's logic was, you know, both guys end up going to kind of a neutral site. So there's not this like, you know, mixed emotions either way. Both guys, they get to go and team up with a, a young star and Victor Wimanyama, right? And then they would have enough to, to potentially win an NBA championship. But jumping right into the proposal, it was LeBron James and Steph Curry going to the Spurs. The Lakers will receive Keldon Johnson, Harrison Barnes, 2027 a San Antonio first and the 31 Minnesota first. Warriors would receive Devin Vassell, uh, Zach Collins, and uh, Sissoko, uh, as well as the 27th uh, Atlanta first and the 30th Dallas first. Um, now, as far as the return, I don't think either team would want to do this type of return. I don't. Um, now, obviously, LeBron, he has a no trade clause, so he can waive where he wants to go. So, you know, he's in a position to where he could kind of force his way if he wanted to. But, you know, the Warriors, like Devin Vassell, Zach Collins, right? Like, it, I just, you're not getting a quality return for Steph. Yeah, that 27 Atlanta first, that 30 Dallas first. Sure. And then from a Lakers standpoint, Keldon Johnson, like both parties are getting a young talent. Lakers and Keldon Johnson, Warriors and Devin Vassell. The question is who has more trade value, right? I don't think the Lakers would do it because I just don't think that that's a good enough return for LeBron James. I understand LeBron James is age 40, but he's coming off of being the MVP in the Olympics. He was still a top 10 player in the league last year, right? Yes, at 40, it's a bit of concern, but Steph is 37, right? Steph and LeBron James is still a better player than Steph Curry. So I just think the Lakers would be like, nah, we definitely ain't doing it for that. You probably have to give up more first. But then if you're the Spurs, is that something you want to do? That's why I just think it, it would be too difficult for any team, not just the Spurs, to go get Steph and LeBron because both those teams are going to want a significant return. That's why I think if they were going to go to another team. It would be probably Steph going to the Lakers and the Warriors getting everything from the Lakers. Max Christie, Dalton Connect, multiple firsts, all their picks. Like, it would just be a massive haul because the Lakers would be going all in as opposed to the Warriors trading for LeBron because, again, they have all that young talent. But let's, again, explore just the, the fun possibility. Now, obviously, LeBron James, Steph Curry would be fantastic together and be an absolute blast and joy to watch. And then also to be alongside Victor Wimanyama. Now, the reason I think that this would be huge and why, look, if you're the Spurs, you do this, right? Because, you know, you basically clear off clean slate after Steph and LeBron walk. And you basically have Victor Wimanyama, you know, Stephon Castle and a bunch of just young talent, right? So... I, if I'm the Spurs, I'm doing this all day. You'd still have Chris Paul. So literally, you could go Chris Paul, Steph, LeBron, uh, Sohan, and and uh, or Castle, and Victor Wimanyama. But the, the idea is you team up Steph and LeBron with Victor, and Victor is so good defensively and covers so much ground defensively that if anyone could mask... Steph Curry's defensive ailments, as well as LeBron kind of taking defensive possessions off, it would be Victor, 
right? Like, because again, he just he's so impactful on the defensive side of the ball. You know, and you slot LeBron, you could slot LeBron at the four, right, and have him kind of in that scout role, like he plays with the Lakers uh, alongside Victor Wembanyama, and then Victor can kind of just patrol and and then defend. You got Steph Curry out on the perimeter. Also, Victor would absolutely eat, in my opinion. Right, because you'd have a you'd still have Chris Paul who could set him up and get him the basketball in his spots. LeBron James, still one of, if not the best playmakers in the league, period. And he's gonna be able to just let uh Victor Wimanyama eat. Steph Curry, again, he can make some plays. And you could even if you're Steph and LeBron, you can kind of let Victor be the workhorse, right? Like you can let Victor Wimanyama because he's so young. Kind of, you know, go be the 30-point-a-game guy. Right? Let him just, just take over. And then you have LeBron and Steph down the stretch. They're both going to go get their 20-plus. But, you know, they can kind of pick and choose and kind of, in a lot of ways, coaster in the season so that way they're healthy come playoffs. And then you just use LeBron James and Steph to kind of close you out and, and win you quarters uh, here and there. And then also, imagine what LeBron and Steph would do for just Victor's growth and development, right? To have two proven winners that have been in, you know, five plus NBA finals. I mean, LeBron's been to 10. Steph's been in what? Five, six. So, you know, you're talking, you're talking about two guys that have, you know, combined like 16 playoff appearance or finals appearances, not playoff appearances, finals appearances, both have won four NBA finals, right? Like it's just, that what that would do for Victor to teach him how to be a real winner, teach him how, what it takes to win in the league, and then also have those three together to to go win another championship. Again, if you're healthy, good luck. I mean, Victor Wembanyama was the best defensive player in the league last year, and there was a genuine argument he was a top fifteen player in the league. Period. All right. So you're adding him and who is the future of just the NBA. Period. To two of the faces of the league that are on their way out in the next few years. I, look, I've talked about it before. Because Victor is so good and so cheap right now, I mean, he is, like, dirt cheap right now based on his production. He might be the best value contract in the league. His, his like, now would be the best time to do something like this if you wanted to try to sneak a championship or two before... Victor gets that big pay raise, right? Because you can bring in LeBron and Steph. You got them for the next two years or so, right? And then they both ride off into the sunset. You know, if you win a championship or two, that's already huge, right? Victor's already ahead of schedule. And now you just have Victor Wimanyama and a bunch of free cap space. You don't think other guys are going to want to go play with Victor Wimanyama? You don't think other guys, especially if he makes Steph and LeBron and everyone look good, particularly on the defensive side of things, right? Like, I just think you, if you can do this, like if this was a real option on the table for the Spurs, I think you do this all day. I mean, and that's not even counting a business standpoint. Imagine the, the money that the Spurs would make having Victor, Steph, and LeBron James together. <laughs> like the, the financials. Just make too much sense if you're the Spurs. And you'd be a real contender. You get to help expedite Victor's growth. You'd still have Chris Paul. You'd still have Cass. You'd still have a lot of things that are still very beneficial for the future. Ca imagine the... the like we, There's been a lot of talk about Castle and his development alongside Chris Paul. Imagine what his growth and development would be alongside Chris Paul, Steph Curry, and LeBron James. I mean, just it would be ridiculous. And then imagine what LeBron could do with guys like a, like a Jeremy Sohan, right? Like, it's just if you could do this, you do it all day because it just it helps grow and develop the young guys that you do still keep. It puts you in a position to win an NBA championship. It would help Victor long term. It's a no brainer. Now, just in general, for the NBA, right? If you're the NBA, yeah, you, you want this. You want the storyline, right? Now, there's a lot of talk. Oh, the NBA, they don't want super teams. They don't want this. They don't want that. They want it. I mean, it's been proven time and time again. The best ratings, the most views, the most everything are when there are super teams, 
right? When there are those teams that are put together. But just the storyline of LeBron James and Steph Curry together, the NBA couldn't say no to that. The NBA would probably push for something like this rather than trying to avoid something like this. And they wouldn't be so overwhelming good, right, that it's like, it's not, it wouldn't be KD on the Warriors. Right? They'd still be beatable. Right? There's still injury elements that are concerning with Steph's age and LeBron's age and stuff, right? Like Victor, do do they actually, you know, uh suppress Victor's growth and development, right? Like there's a lot of question marks, but they would be without a doubt an actual contender. Now, again, I just believe that if these two were to team up, more likely than not, it would be with the Lakers. Um, I don't think LeBron's going to leave the Lakers, particularly this season, maybe next year, but this season is supposed to be the season with his son. I don't think he's going to finally get what he's wanted for the last like five years to then to go leave and go play with Steph this season. Now I could see that maybe after this, you get through the, the father son year, right? Father son years done. And then you go to a, a team like the Warriors, or maybe you do the Spurs route, and and now you're you're playing with Steph, and now you get to kind of have a year or two with Steph. I could see something like that, but I just I think if this was ever going to happen, I just look at the situation and I go, Lakers are better suited to win now because you know you you trade basically everything, but you'd get Steph, you'd have LeBron, Steph, and Anthony Davis, which is the same idea as Steph, LeBron, and Victor Wembanyama. Right, but Anthony Davis just has more experience. He's already won a championship, right? He covers the same ground defensively, right? Like so, again, it's just you, you, you have the likelihood of you winning is higher, in my opinion, with the Lakers because again, Anthony Davis is already there. Where it's nothing against Victor. Victor is an incredible talent, but it's year two, right? He still has a lot of growing, a lot of development, right? And and it's just you add Steph, LeBron, and Anthony Davis. If those three are healthy. I don't think that there's a question if you win, right? And you'd still, at that point, like, question would be, oh, you got to fill out the roster. I believe you'd be fine, right? You'd probably still be able to keep guys like Jared Vanderbilt, right? You're probably unloading, you know, everybody else, right? Like I said, you're probably, you know, Dalton Connect, Austin Reeves. You'd have to do, like, D'Lo because you need the contract salaries. Probably sending out Rui Hachimura. Probably sending out, you know, the three pick swaps and the two firsts that you have plus whatever else, right? Like, you're Maxwell Lewis, Jalen Hitchfield, like, you're sending out whatever, you basically open your 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 roster and you go, whoever you want, whatever you want, besides LeBron and AD, it's yours, right? And they're a young team, so it makes more sense, rather than the other side, which is like, are the Warriors really going to want to trade Kaminga and Moody and all these guys for, you know, two years of LeBron? Probably not. Right? Are they really going to want to trade? Like, they didn't want to trade Pod by himself for a Lori Markinen, who's 27. Right? Now, obviously, Lori Markinen's not LeBron. Um, but still, it's like Lori Markinen you would have had for at least the next four to five years, where LeBron, you probably have a year, maybe two. It's just, it's, it's very different. Right? Are you selling the farm? Where I believe the Lakers would sell the farm for Steph, and then once again, once LeBron and Steph's money falls off the books, you're the Lakers, you're in LA, you still have Anthony Davis, right, or if Anthony Davis departs too, then you're the Lakers with a, you know, basically an empty, clean roster slate, right, so you go get two or three new stars and start all over again, right, the other big thing is just, there's a lot of questions about, like, big threes, right, the new CBA, big threes don't work, look at the Suns, and no, like, big threes absolutely still work when they're properly put together, right? You, you have to have the pieces that make sense, though. Right? Look throughout history of all the, like, super teams, right? From, like, the Celtics to the Showtime Lakers. Like, all the guys play different positions. All guys play different roles. All the way into, you know, the, the Celtics big three with Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, and KG, Right? All three guys had very different skill sets. All three guys played different positions. All three guys complemented each other, right? So it worked. Uh, Same thing with, you know, the the Miami Heat big three. You had Wade, 
Bosh, LeBron James. All three guys have different skill sets. All three guys play different roles. All three guys kind of complement each other. It took a little figuring out. It wasn't as seamless, but still, eventually, they were realizing, oh, yeah, you know, LeBron at the four, Bosh at the five, and then, you know, Dwayne Wade out on the perimeter, going to be a very good basketball team, right? And then, you know, you look at, again, the Cavs with LeBron and Kyrie and Kevin Love, same thing. Warriors with, you know, Steph, Clay, Draymond, same thing. And then they add Kevin Durant. But why did that work? Because, again, all three guys, very unselfish. All three guys play different positions. All three guys, yes, are can shoot and score the basketball. But at the time, you know, Clay was a legit, you know, defensive guard, uh, three and D style guy. Kevin Durant was a legit two way guy at the time. He was younger. He was better defensively. Steph was, you know, a magician with the basketball. And then Draymond, you had who was just so unselfish and was willing to just be kind of the playmaker and defender, right? Like all the guys had different skill sets. Yes, they had similarities, but they had different skill sets. Now you look at a team like the Phoenix Suns, and it's like Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, and Devin Booker are essentially the same player at different scales. I mean, Devin Booker and Bradley Beal are, have the almost the exact same play style and are incredibly similar, but neither of them can really play a different position. They're both the two. Neither are really big enough to play the three. Kevin Durant is best at the three. Yeah, he could slot over to the four, but he's still best as the three. And then none of the guys are good enough as playmakers to slide to the point. So you just have this like log jam and this just like awkwardness. So to me, you add LeBron and Steph to an Anthony Davis to a Victor Wembanyama. I just think it's a no-brainer. I think you're winning NBA championships. I think all three guys have different skill sets. All three guys play different positions. All three guys would complement each other very nicely. But again, just a fun conversation video. Um, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you like the idea of Steph and LeBron teaming up? Um, if so, do you want them to team up with the Spurs? Do you want them to team up with the Lakers? Do you want them to team up with the Warriors? Uh, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Helps me enjoy these types of videos. Truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.